Hi, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm a little bit late today, but um, it's because I've been working on my presentation, which is coming up in another few days. And I'm encouraging you all to join me in this here. And this is what it would look like. This is all the slides that I'm putting together uh, about immune privilege. And so what I want people to do is, if you're interested in this, is to join me in the next few days um, looking at this um, presentation. The link is in the description if you're interested. And it's talking about immune privilege and the relevance of immune privilege in the context of what is happening at the moment around COVID. And just so that people understand, is that at, at times we can have a focus on what happened in the pandemic in relation to the vaccines, vaccine mandates, vaccine rollouts, and the low risk population. And on the other side, people are saying that they're not worried about it because COVID is mild. And it is mild in the sense that it's not causing severe disease, but it doesn't mean that it's mild in the context of causing organ damage. And this is the important thing, which is why I emphasize to people, you have got to try and reduce your exposure to this virus. It is, it is an absolute nightmare. And anyone who doubts what I'm saying, just reflect on the fact that we still have no clear consensus as to where it came from. This is not just the run-of-the-mill coronavirus. And so what I'm mentioning today is more to do with the fact that um, I want you all, as I said, to, uh, to join me in terms of the presentation coming up uh, in another few days. The link is in the description. And um, about autoimmunity uh, 101, I'll show you the image if I can find it. For some reason, my screen has frozen. But um, I'll show you here what it looks like. Take that off and add that in. Yes, how can immune privilege change you? And so this is the presentation in another few days. And today I'm focused on the placenta and why the placenta is so critical. And what, what I've done is as it, it forces me, because I have to do the presentation, to really take a deep dive on the research to try and understand what is going on. And so one of the things, the first thing you have to know is what really is the placenta? And so um, I have got here this uh, paper so that you can look at it oxidative stress in placental pathology. And the purpose of it is because it has some images in it that I think are, are relevant. And they're showing here the placenta with the umbilical cord, because remember the baby has to get all of its nutrients from the mother. And so effectively you have blood streams, blood coming in from the mother. These are spiral arteries and they then create in these spaces blood, and inside are these villi from the fetus that will absorb nutrients and take it up the umbilical cord. And this system here is extremely important to allow the placenta to be functional and to get nutrients to the baby. And the reason why I've been focused on it is because of that principle of immune privilege, which I'll be talking about again in a little more detail. And immune privilege is, is the fact that the body recognizes that there are some areas that need to be protected because it has abnormal antigens. Remember that the, the baby is different from the mother. And so it's kind of like doing a transplant because their genetics are different. So you have to keep them completely separate from each other. And any interaction of the immune systems can damage that placenta. And that's where the immune privilege comes in because you need specialized cells, T-regulatory cells. This is what just got the Nobel um, Prize this year 
to protect the placenta, but also the testes, also the eye, also certain parts of the intestine, also the ears. So there are multiple places, the hair follicle, multiple parts of the body that need to be protected or else the immune system will naturally attack it. And that's what we mean by immune privilege. And I'll, in the presentation, I'll go into some more detail about that. But for the time being, I just need you to understand a few basics about this placenta. And this is a cross section here of the villus where the maternal blood is. And then inside it, you have the fetal vessels that are absorbing nutrients. And it's a protected area so that the immune system doesn't target it. So the question then is, based on the research around spike protein, it seems to damage the T regulatory cells. These are the peacemakers. These are the, the ones, they, in, in my view, in a bar, they would tend to represent the women who are preventing the men who are half drunk from getting into fights. And that's what these regulatory cells are. They're the peacemakers. They settle things down so that things don't get out of hand. If they get damaged, suddenly immune privilege disappears. And that's where it comes to the second part of what I was talking about, which is the impact of COVID infection on placental histopathology and maternal perinatal outcomes. This was from Iran. And um, a, a good paper highlighting what happens with regards to the placenta and the histopathology. Now, this is the, the thing that always catches me. Anybody who is doing histopathology, looking in details at the cells and the tissues, is definitely on the right track. So they had done the histopathology. And all I wanted to focus on is what exactly did they find in terms of um, pathology. So when you look at the paper and you look at the difference between the cohort who were, so you can see 70% who had COVID had fibrin deposited around the villi. That means that there were clots. And again, 70% had thrombosis within the villi. So after infection, you start to have clotting in and around the placenta. Lymphocytic infiltration in fetal, um, fetal villi. Remember I told you the, the fetus is supposed to be immune protected. 90% in this cohort had that. This is what would be driving an immune response. More blood vessels, chorangiosis, 90%. All of them had some degree of hemorrhage in between the villi. And you had complete vill villus infarction and thrombosis, 100%. And some of the villi not having blood vessels at all, 100%. I mean, this is the histopathology looking um, looking at it. These are not big groups, 30 and 10, but just the same, this highlights the fact that this is something quite unique with COVID infection. And whenever I say COVID infection, what I actually mean is spike protein immune responses. You can read into that as much as you like. But the point is at the moment, COVID is still circulating. And what's happening is that because it, the infection is so mild, people barely notice that they have had it. Literally, if you, if you want to find that if somebody had COVID and they're unwell, you literally have to take a step-by-step -step history to look for very specific patterns. And I usually find fatigue and headache that come on relatively quickly are the indicators of the start point. And that may be all people have, and they don't even know that it may be related to a COVID infection. So when I look at that and look at the pathology that occurs in the placenta, this suggests that immune privilege and blood vessels are damaged. And therefore, I would expect 
that we're going to see more and more damaged placentas, which would in the long term mean that you have more complications around um, delivery. You would have increased risk of stillbirths. And um, speaking with um, yesterday with Richard Hirschman, he was saying that for the first time he saw three stillborns in the, um, the funeral home, something he had not seen before. So that's a really important flag for us to monitor. And so these are issues that are around that principle of immune privilege. And just the encouragement to join me in the um, in this presentation come up, coming up, Autoimmunity 101. Um, I just wanted to give you an idea from one of the slides uh, what immune privilege means, um, looks like in the context of um, a hair follicle. And uh, this is what it would look like. Um, let's just see. Oops. Oh, there, let's go again. So this is what it would look like, and this is part of the presentation, is the hair follicle is another immune privileged area. And what you tend to have around it are these T regulatory cells, TREGs, you can call it, and they protect the hair follicle from the immune system. If this gets damaged, then it would attack the hair follicle and cause hair loss. This is alopecia areata. And... Um, this is an example of how immune privilege works and why if you damage these regulatory cells, you will then have damage to any organ that is protected. And that's what the presentation is about. That immune privilege seems to be being damaged. What are the disease manifestations we will see? And critically, is there anything that we can do about it? So that's the essence of what we're talking about uh, this evening and I uh, look forward to sharing more information with you in the near future. Have a good evening.